Richard Foden. If the name sounds familiar, it's because there's a company called Foden Trucks, and a number of Matchbox castings were based upon Foden Trucks. The story, as I understand it, is that the elder Foden started as an apprentice in a company that was into steam power in a big way back in the 1800s. He eventually became a partner and when the last of the senior partners retired, the company was renamed to Edwin Foden Sons and Company. Many years later, his son, also Edwin, resigned his position with the company over a dispute centered around the decline in steam and the emergence of diesel power. This is all an oversimplification to be sure, but the new company was called ERF because the junior Edwin was called ER for short. The Matchbox 11B was pr produced from 1958 to 1964. It was the second ERF tanker produced by Lesney. Early versions of the 11B had crimped axles and the side tanks were sometimes painted silver. Later versions were also slightly larger. The 11A and 11B models were similar but the small connection between the back of the cab and the front of the tank would indicate that mine is an 11B. I purchased it for $6 plus shipping on eBay. It was pur purchased as a single unit. Because I saw it, I liked it, and I wanted it. This will be a softball of a restoration in that there's not a whole lot to it. But enjoy. The toy was cast at 1 100th scale. And you can see the little connector that I was talking about between the cab and the tank right here. It had no chassis and a large SO decal on the back that I had uh, received from Black Square decals. I decided to sleeve these axles, so I'm just going to split them right in the middle. The axles are pretty rusty anyway. And then once I had them off, it was just a matter of dropping the whole thing into some stripper. Stripper made quick work of the paint. And then I started cleaning the casting to get it ready for new paint. There was no damage. There was nothing bent. It just needed to be cleaned. You can see those tanks on the side that were uh, sometimes painted. Ironically, I never found an example where they painted the little caps on top of the tank. It's good solid casting. I gave it a going over with steel wool prior to the application of Tamiya White Surface Primer. I apologize for the focus here. I didn't even realize that I was uh, off my center. There we go. I decided to just shoot this with Tamiya X7 Red without uh, without changing the color at all. This is just the color that comes right out of the jar. Uh, I think it's a really pretty color. I put on a light tack coat like I always do. And then I generally let it sit for... 15 to 20 minutes before I apply any additional coats. I 
It's a very distinctive front end of these trucks. I didn't actually uh, apply a third coat. Uh, I just started painting the second coat and the paint was going on so good that I just thought, eh, I'm just going to paint it. And yes, I use a single action airbrush. I used to use a double action airbrush, but you know, for the type of work that I'm doing with it, I think that a double action airbrush is overkill. Uh, this thing is really easy to clean. It does a really nice job and it's really easy to use. Where'd I go? Oh, here I come. Okay, there. You, what I did there is I opened up the valve. First, I closed it because I thought I had maybe a plug. What I get is I start getting this uh, almost, it's almost like a pulsing sound coming out of the airbrush. So I clean the tip. I opened it up a little further to lay the paint on just a little bit heavier and finished putting the paint on. And then of course, I always follow it up with uh, X22 Clear. I always shoot away from the model first so that if there's any splatters, they're on the paper towel, not on the model. I'm trying to get that space in between the tank and the cab. I'm always a little concerned when I'm dealing with great big decals. And this, not only was it a big decal, but it was also being uh, laid onto a curved surface. And decals don't, they don't curve very well. They tend to get folds and wrinkles in them. And you can see as I work with this, that's what's happening here. So I started using uh, Microset uh, right away. Uh, usually I wait until I get good adhesion. Of course I spilled some. Stuff's like gold and I spill it. But uh, I'm trying to work that decal, the edges of it, get it nice and soft so I can get it to lay flat. And I actually worked on it uh, for a fairly long time. I don't have footage of all of it, but uh, in the end, I think I got it to lay pretty flat. The decal was also slightly too large vertically. Horizontally, it was fine. It was the vertical. And then once I was done with the decal, uh, pretty much all of them uh, that were ever made had the headlights and the grill painted. I finally relented and bought myself some really decent detailing brushes. I have some subscribers who tell me that I'm using the wrong brush for this or the wrong brush for that, but uh, I use what I feel comfortable with. And I turn it around because I want to work on the inside edge of the grill opening. I don't want to try to get paint right up to the edge going over the ridge that is around the outside of the grill. And I actually look online to see if they paint that ridge because sometimes they do. But in this model, it seemed like just the inside was painted. So a lot of people tell me, well, gee, you know, I should do stuff this way or I should do stuff that way. I was hired by a guy at a, the police department, uh, the chief, uh, his name was Donald Earl Davis. And the day he hired me, he said, you know what? 
Don't believe anything you hear and only half of what you see. But I got to give a shout out to George Hodges here because I watched him cut axle tubes using uh, a box cutter. And honestly, that had never occurred to me. But I always have a great deal of respect when somebody shows me that something will work instead of just telling me. And it's even more frustrating when somebody tells me something and I think it's a good idea and then I go look at their channel and guess what? They don't have any videos uploaded. So how do I know if what they're telling me will work or not? So I cut uh, three axle tubes and then uh, the wheels were rusted onto the axles so I just shot them full of WD-40 in an old pill bottle. I saved these things like mad. I shook it up a little bit and went about the business of removing the wheels from the axles or the tires from the axles. Now, they were so corroded. Uh, I've seen Nick do this on Matchbox Restorations where he uses sandpaper. These were so corroded, I actually put a file up to them so that I could get right up to the edge of the burr. It actually worked really well. And then here's another neat little trick when you're dealing with little parts is, uh, you know, take a piece of masking tape and fold it back over on itself and throw the pieces that you don't want to lose onto the masking tape. And what I'm doing here is I need to make sure that each axle piece fits smoothly through the tire and, uh, into the end of the sleeve that I'm making for the axle. So I put each one together and I try it and I have six of them that I have to do. It's got to go in easily or it just makes life difficult. So now I also have a lot of people ask me about how I do this. Well, I take a toothpick and run it through the other side just to hang onto the axle. So I'm not fooling around with it. And then, uh, just a very small drop of uh, super glue gel is what I'm using here. And I just feed it through there and push it in. And uh, put together another wheel assembly. Looking for the best side of the wheel. And I must have seen a burr on the end of this one that was concerning to me. So I took a file and uh, filed it smooth because I needed to go in there. And again, uh, a small drop of uh, super glue. Use the tweezers to line up the sleeve with the hole and put it together. And that's really all there was to this. Uh, Here's the original, all chipped up, rusty axles. I think it was a really good candidate for restoration, uh, especially with the, the decal being all messed up on the back of it. Yeah, it was a, it was a nice candidate for restorations. I did uh, clear coat the uh, model after I put the decal on, and I think that really helped. But anyway, uh, let's take a look at where I wound up. I did paint the wheel centers with silver. And there's that big old decal. I think it's laying on there about as good as I could have probably gotten it to lay on there. It's a nice little toy and I really, really enjoyed doing it and I'm really happy with how it turned out and I'm happy to have it in my collection. There will be uh, an episode of The Bench immediately following the video. The Matchbox 11B ERF Tanker. This is Time Rider. And I'll leave the light on for you.
Thanks for sticking around for another episode of The Bench where I share with everybody useless knowledge intended for the private use of my viewers. You know, I'm really excited about this upcoming uh, cooperative build and I already started on mine. Uh, so, uh, the Rolls Royce has been dismantled and stripped and it's get, got a coat of primer. The number 35 snow track made its way into the primer booth and uh, the top and the bottom are both ready for final colors. And then I was working on that uh, Scammel truck a little more. I used tire wash on the uh, grill, which is something that I've done before. Uh, it's very thin and the, uh, the black falls into the low parts on the grill and the, the high parts uh, retain their their chrome and I noticed while I was doing it there was one spot that I needed to touch up because I just missed it but anyway uh, this is Time Rider everybody have a good day and I'll see you in my next video at least I hope so